Right. Yes. And all right, take it away, Les. He's going to tell us all about the rack which calibrates the calibrators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, basically, you've summed it up. Um, a need, there was a need by agent customers to be able to calibrate a calibrator. Yep. Be it a fluke like this one here, be it a Datron, like the older models down there, mm -hmm. uh, Wavetech, whatever uh, they wanted. So we d developed a rack. Um, that uses a Daytron 4950, which is called a Calibrator's Calibrator. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Pete's talked to you about the Gold 3458. Yes. So we have one of those. Frequency counter, single channel power meter, scope, etc., etc. And we use this equipment with a couple of current shunts as well, all under Metcal uh, control. Metcal control, can you now explain you, that? Okay, Metcal is a program developed by Fluke yep. that allows you to write script to be able to control electronic equipment. And you normally have a user interface, as you may see on, mm -hmm. on that display there, that you can operate the program. And we've written it in such a way that when there's a cable change or an instruction to be done, rather than having a written instruction, mm -hmm. you have a pictorial, as you can see a over there. Pictorial instruction? Which Excellent. Picture is worth a thousand words. A thousand say. words. Yep. This is how you hook it up. That's how you hook yep. it up, and yep. you just hook it. You hit Doesn't. the go button, and hopefully everything passes. <laughs> and how do how do you ensure traceable calibration of the Datron calibrator? Okay. For example, but, how does okay. that primary standard get? Well, our two primary standards, say for low voltage mm -hmm. or low uh, frequencies, is the Gold 3458 and the Daytron 4950. Yep. Gold 3458 goes to our Loveland hub in the US. Right. And they're traceable by NIST. Got it. The Daytron goes back to Fluke, and they're traceable by either by NIST or UCAS, depending upon where we stand it. Mm -hmm. So we have two lines of traceability all ending up at a high All level. ending up at the one mm. place. So it's common for, um, I guess, you guys all to work together as part of yes. one big Happy family. traceably calibrated calibration community. Otherwise, yes. it, in, in isolation, it doesn't really work. No, it Does doesn't. It? No. It, you all rely upon breaks, each other. The whole system breaks down, really. Exactly right. Right, got it. So you, we all rely upon each other to ensure that our uncertainties are yep. within reason. And what sort of... Uh, uncertainty does your calibrator, your gold standard calibrator need to have over and above when you're calibrating something like this fluke calibrator, for example? Okay, well, law dictates... The test uncertainty ratio. Yeah. The uncertainty yeah. of the measurements that we perform on that mm -hmm. has to be lower than the uncertainties that we receive from those. Yep. Just a, a mathematical yep. fact. Because what happens is if, uh, for example, a uh, uh, fluke in, in the US gives us an uncertainty of, say, one microvolt per volt mm -hmm. on DC, well, we can't have an uncertainty of that. It's got to be it's worse be, than that. Yes. And the same. Four times, usually, there's the. Um, not, necessarily, figure, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It all depends upon the. Um, uh, do you know how we do uncertainty? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much time have we got? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, we're, Tell you're us about cutting it really, really, really short, okay? Yeah. There are two types of analysis that you need to do. Type A is type B's. Right. Type A is measurement of your device on the test. Mm -hmm. um, we normally do it five times. Right. And thus, those five measurements that you get, you get a drift rate over those five measurements, mm -hmm. and that's your... Uh, ESDM, as we call it, right? ESDM. You combine for estimated deviation of the standard mean words to that effect. Got it. Sorry. Experimental. Experimental. Thank you. <laughs> deviation. Yes. <laughs> now, because we've used, say, this device. Mm -hmm. Now, this device can either have uncertainties if it was calibrated by another accredited lab mm -hmm. on that measurement, or if it doesn't, and you. If it does, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. If you want to use the tightest specification, you use the uncertainties. If you want to use the broadest, you use the uncertainties that the manufacturer says it's got. Right. So it depends right. how you want to go. And then by, uh -huh. uh, by uh, using the summing law, the square root of, 
um, you work out what your uncertainty measurement for that point yep. was. And that's your that's job as a metrologist as to, a metrologist. to as a certified metrologist yes. to understand all that, take it all into account, track the data, analyze it. You must love math. <laughs> right. And you statistics. must love math. <laughs> so that, that's basically really simplistic. Right. Yep. Uh, you can get quite complicated, but that's a simplistic. Right. How would you calibrate the oscilloscope calibrators? For example, that, well, well, that one is that's that got a 600 uh, yep. mega oscilloscope out. Mm -hmm. uh, on this particular model, it's called the SC600 mm -hmm. uh, scope calibrator 600 mega. So, but basically, uh, with the scope output, you've got to make sure that your levels are correct. Yep. Uh, your sine wave is a sine wave. You know, pulse width, etc. So we still use some sort of DVM. Mm -hmm. Okay for linearity across the whole frequency range from couple, say 10k up to 600 meg, you would use a power sensor or a semister mount, something that's got a, a broad, broad range. band mm. range. Because oscilloscopes don't really require precision calibrate because they're generally, you know, a, a percent on the vertical at most, you know, the higher Yes, the but the, are, the higher, the, the, yeah. the more sophisticated the oscilloscope like this one down here, the yep. our infiniums, the, um, the better they are. So what you use to calibrate those has got to be good as well. Especially in terms of something like a noise floor or something like that. Would you measure the noise, noise typically measure the noise no, floor not, on a scope? I, you I wouldn't, wouldn't say the noise floor, but you would definitely measure on the least, on the smallest value voltage per mm -hmm. division, say normally one millivolt. Yep. You'd put one millivolt in there one and a half millivolts to see how much noise you've got because that will play around with your Got it. measurement. Excellent. Thank you very much. Pleasure.